Hey guys, my name is Kara Marie Morris and I'm the host of the Words in Season podcast. This week, I want to talk to you about your decision to not quit. I won't talk about you, but I'll talk about me. I know that there's been jobs, relationships, different goals in my life that I have quit too soon. And that is when I have cut off the blessing, the power, God's anointing in my life is because I have quit too soon. Maybe it's because of laziness, other people's opinions, what I thought other people thought about me, about my life, being more afraid of man than really even believing in myself. The story that I want to read to you today is from the Old Testament and is when Elisha and Elijah were about to be separated because Elisha was staying and his master Elijah was going to heaven. It says, When the Lord God was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, Surely as the Lord lives, and as surely as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked them, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? And Elisha replied, Yes, I know it, so be quiet. So then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. And again, the company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. So then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And as he replied again, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went down and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. And Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water with it. And the water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken? And he said, Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not be. And as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses appeared and separated the two of them. And Elisha went up, Elijah went up in the, in the whirlwind. And Elisha cried, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. So Elisha saw him no more. And Elisha picked up Elijah's coat that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. And he took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. So the whole point of this passage that I read in 2 Kings chapter 2 is that people are going to want to get you to quit. All of these prophets were saying, don't you know this is going to happen? Don't you have something better to do? Don't you know that you should be planning? You should be making sure that you've got your plan in place because Elijah is about to be taken away and then you're going to be left here. But because Elisha said, I will not give up. I will not leave who God has placed in my life. I will not turn from the right or to the left. That anointing fell upon him. Had Elisha gone on his own plan, had Elisha made his own plan and followed it or abandoned it too soon, if he would have said, oh yeah, you're right. I don't need to go to Bethel. I don't need to go to Jericho. I don't need to go to the Jordan River because I need to plan because my master is about to leave. Elijah is about to leave me, so I need to make plans. These prophets are right. Maybe I can join these prophets in Jericho, in Bethel, or at the Jordan. But he said, be quiet. He said to all the voices that were around him that wasn't what confirmed what was in his heart, even though that they were prophets, Elisha said, no, this doesn't want this is not what my commitment is. This is not what God has confirmed in my heart. I am not leaving. I'm not leaving out of laziness. I'm not leaving because of my own plan. I'm not leaving because of the voices of the world. And I'm not leaving even because of other plans and because of what other people think about my life and what I think, what they think I should do. 
I am not leaving. And it is because he did not leave the place that God had him. Maybe not a physical place, but a place of being hand in hand, working together, striving together for the faith of the gospel with the man of God that he was called to. That is where he received his double portion. He decided he was not going to quit. He decided he was not going to leave. And as he saw his master being taken up, just like the disciples, you know, they, there was a huge opportunity for fear and anxiety among the disciples when they saw their master, their rabbi, their Jesus being lifted up. But Jesus said then, Jesus is saying now that it's better if I go. Same here with Elijah and Elisha. It was better if Elijah went to heaven because he was granted, Elisha was granted what he asked, a double portion of his spirit. And now as Christians, as believers, spirit-filled Christians, that is a secondary part of salvation is being filled with the Holy Spirit, being able to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives, uh, gives that utterance, and also being able to hear the voice of the Lord and obey the voice of the Lord. Maybe physically you think, well, I don't, I don't have a, a Elijah that I'm following, but are you following your pastor that close? When he's asking for volunteers, when he's asking for help, are you following your pastor that close? When other, other people are saying, there's no anointing in that church anymore, that church was anointed when such and such was around, then that's when I was a, a member of that church, but now I've moved on because the anointing has moved on. But that is not how God operates. God operates in today because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if God has called you to a person, a place, a project, he has placed that thing in your heart that will fulfill you, then he's saying, you need to tell, just like Elisha told all those prophets, be quiet, be quiet. So be quiet. Don't you know that this is going to happen? So be quiet. Don't you know that they're not anointed anymore because so-and-so is not the pastor anymore? So be quiet. No. Nope. Because I know where God has placed me and that is where I will receive that double portion. So just like Elisha would never have been there to pick up that mantle and put it on and strike it with the water. He saw his master do it. Elisha saw Elijah do it. He saw him strike the water. So he was able to learn how to operate in the anointing. And then whenever Elijah was taken up to heaven, Elisha was there. He was available. He was ready to pick up that mantle, to pick up that anointing, to pick up that cause and that mandate, to pick it up and say, now it's mine. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Abraham? Where is the God of Isaac? Where is the God of yesteryear? People ask so many times, where is the God of miracles that happened in the 50s and the 60s? Where is the God of the Jesus movement? Where is the God of the charismatic move? Where is he? Where is he? He is in us today and he is waiting for us to not give up, to not quit, to make ourselves available and say, we are not moving. We are not moving no matter what we feel like, no matter what we see, because we know that it is the same God that lives in us, that does miracles today, that speaks through us to set this world on fire for him. So people may be asking around you, why do you go to church there? Why are you still serving in that area? No one even appreciates you. No one even sees your gift. Or maybe that's the lie of the enemy that you see and you hear. But you can say, I'm not leaving. I am not moving. I will not be moved. And you can say, I will not quit. So that's the word in season this week. Don't quit. Tell the voices around you. Tell you the laziness to quit in you to say, listen, we're done. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up because I know that there's an anointing and a power for me from heaven today. So thank you so much for watching the Words in Season podcast. It's an honor every time I get to share the word of God with you. Remember, don't quit. We need your supply. We need your gift. And God has an anointing for you today.